Okay. Yeah. Stephen Kinnock. Thank you very much, uh, Monsieur Lamy, for, for coming in to see us. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, trade defence and anti-dumping <coughs> measures. You'll be aware, I'm sure, that um, 18 months, two years ago, the British steel industry was in a deep crisis. Um, and this is a matter that's very close to my heart, as I have the largest steelworks in the country in my constituency. And a massive contributing factor to that crisis was the dumping of Chinese steel. Massive overcapacity produced by Chinese steel makers. 80% of the Chinese steel industry is state-owned. Uh, so clearly we're not competing here on a, a level playing field. It's not a market. Our market economy is competing against a massively subsidized uh, competitor. Um, and, and what I wanted to ask you really is, as and when the United Kingdom leaves the European Union, do you believe that its ability to uh, compete on a level playing field by using trade defence measures uh, when necessary will be strengthened or weakened? For the moment, as a member of the EU, UK benefits from the EU trade protection. Half of the people in uh, DG trade in uh, Brussels are administering uh, trade defense instrument, i.e. anti-dumping, anti-subsidy and safeguards. When UK, if and when UK leaves, UK will have to build its own system of trade defense. Uh, it will have to recruit the necessary experts, accountants. Trade defense is extremely complex because, notably in the case of anti-dumping, you have to send people inspecting the books of the producer, getting, looking at the books, a sense of what the margin is, what the producing price is, what the selling price is, on which market. It's horribly complex. And in, if my memory is correct, in, in, in Brussels you probably have 200 to 150 experts who are doing only that. Mm. So UK will have to build this force, this expertise force, and then will be bound by the WTO agreement on safeguards, on subsidies, and on countervailing measures, famous ASCM, like any other WTO member, and EU, UK will be able to impose its own anti-dumping duty to take its own safeguard measure or to impose its own anti-subsidy uh, measure. Just using the steel example as an illustration then, do you think that if the United Kingdom was out on its own, perhaps just as a WTO member and not a member of the European Union, the, the anti-dumping measures that it could have taken against China could in any way have been effective, as effective as the anti-dumping measures that were taken against the European Union, which ultimately led to the uh, reduction in uh, production and dumping of Chinese steel. Yes and no. Uh, yes, in so far as, in theory, if there is dumping, there is a margin of dumping, which you calculate, and you <coughs> offset this with an anti-dumping duty. So there's only one technical solution, and UK would not do more than what EU would have done or the other way around. Now, the no part of the answer to your question is that if I'm China, I'll have less of a problem uh, with UK, uh, uh, with its uh, own market, uh, obstructing uh, my seal than uh, the big market of the EU. Uh, now, in this case, my own technical view is that the real problem we have is that there is a big overcapacity of steel production in China and that China has to cut this and that we have to bring China to reason, which is, by the way, what's happened in the G20 somehow, in the OECD somehow. That's the real problem. Uh, now, would the use of UAE UK trade defence be as effective? Yes and no, but the fact that 
it's a smaller market than part of the bigger market would be less of a problem for others for sure thank you and and i just wanted to change tack a little bit then and, and ask about this issue of the united kingdom's ability to strike trade deals with non-eu countries during the transition period mm -hmm. so it's I think basically accepted now that the transition period will be a carbon copy of the status quo, minus our representation uh, in, in the institutions. So assuming that it is, the transition period is a, is a standstill, do you think there are, is it conceivable that non-EU countries will wish to engage with the United Kingdom in any sort of discussion about doing trade deals Whilst we're during, whilst we're in the tra that transition period, I mean, <coughs> uh, same answer as uh, as uh, to the previous question on this topic. In theory, yes. In reality, third parties, uh, third countries will, in my view, wait to see what the EU UK trade regime is before they enter if not in a negotiation, at least in the, in the conclusion of the negotiation. And there may be, as we all know, a long time between uh, the notion that you start a negotiation. It's like, uh, it's like building schools. Huh? The time you cut the ribbon and the time the school is operating sometimes is uh, decades. So trade negotiations may be very long. Some of them could start, but my guess is that they will wait to see what uh, is given. Uh, to the EU by UK and what is given to UK by the EU and they will use this as a starting base. So we, we've created a department for international trade here that's supposed to be going out and striking these deals. What do you think that department is doing at the moment? What, what's the point of that department? I mean, they, they, they first, I think, <laughs> the first point of this department is, is to build a department to gather the necessary expertise, which is not there because rationally, UK, like other members, the moment this was done, pulled in Brussels, uh, disarmed uh, their own expertise on trade deal, which is totally rational uh, behavior uh, according to, uh, to uh, taxpayers' uh, views. Huh? So the first thing is to rebuild this expertise, and it takes time. Is it two years, is it three years, is it five years? Probably this order of magnitude. Then you have to look at what trade deals these countries have entered into with other countries in order to get a sense of what they want or can do or do not want to do or cannot. So there is a huge amount of analytics to be done. And then you also need, in the meantime, which, as I already said, uh, uh, hoping I said this in, a, in the nicest possible way, uh, you also need the UK to decide on what its trade policy is about. Huh? It, you, you need a sort of, you need a function that I will negotiate trade <coughs> with this country because I need this or I want this, they want this, I'm ready to give this, but this is, this is the content of a trade policy. Where do you want to be open? Where do you want protection? And I'm again talking only in, in market access terms, leaving aside the technical regulation and recognizing that there's sometimes a bit of a gray zone uh, between protecting the producer and protecting the consumer, maybe areas of, of a bit of manipulation. But this inevitably will take a lot of time. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Peter Grant.